Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. All right, so I'm going to go into a, another history lesson here. And this is the history of socialism, which when most people think of socialism, they think of the events of the 20th century, the USSR and China, etc. Other people will think back to Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, uh, maybe Trotsky, but it goes back further than that. In fact, Marx and Engels, in their own writing, make reference to prior socialist movements in France and Germany and England, so, which happened before their writing. That's why they refer to it that way. What Marx and Engels did do was actually basically define it uh, in solid terms, which gave people something to coalesce around. And, of course, the movements, once that happened, movements accelerated and grew. Um, not only in uh, Russia and China, but also in Germany and France and England and, and even in the United States. Uh, you know, their writing was popular even in the United States. But uh, you go back through history, there are many examples. There's not just one form of socialism. There are many forms of socialism. Unlike capitalism, capitalism has only one definition, which is all production benefiting the capitalist, the owner of the means of production. Whereas socialism is more collectivist, where the means of production, the profits of production, are more equitably shared. But state capitalism, some extremists will say it's not, but state capitalism is a, is a form of socialism. It's not actual Marxist socialism, communism, whatever you want to call it. But these are valid forms of socialism. This is on a continuum from absolute capitalism to absolute socialism, communism. These are on a continuum. You go back through history, Native American tribes had a very collectivist structure they, where they went on communal hunts, they did communal agriculture, and all of the food, the output of the hunt, etc., all the labor, it was shared among the community. Most of human history has relied on some form of collectivism, socialism. You look back to the ancient Indians, the almost all of the Middle East, ancient tribes across the world, ancient Egyptians, their massive works. It used to be claimed that things like the pyramids and their ancient and their massive works were done by slaves and, and you know, newer archaeological evidence has shown that this is not true. These were paid, skilled artisans. Well, how were they paid? But the, the wealthier were taxed. And so that the artisans were employed, they were fed, they were housed. Ancient Egypt had um, massive granaries where they would store up the grain and release the grain in times of shortage for the populace to be able to eat. These are just some of the examples, but it still goes back further. I mean, the Vikings largely lived in a socialist, collectivist environment.
the Celts, etc. You, you look back at this, this is how they lived. Capitalism is a very short uh, period in human history. Even up to the 20th century, in the early 20th century in the United States, we had a very strong socialist and uh, communist party in the United States. And people say, well, unions did all this. Well, unions are actually a socialist structure. It's the workers fighting for what is best for the community. And who were they fighting against? The capitalists who wanted everything to be for the benefit of the capitalists. It was socialists who fought for social security. That's why social security has that name. They fought for public schools and child labor laws. Um, you know, unemployment and so forth and so on. They pushed FDR to create federal jobs to employ people so they had an income during the Depression. And those went away as capitalists fought against it. People bemoan the loss of our democracy. The United States has never had a dem true democracy. Jimmy Carter himself said that the United States does not have a functioning democracy at this time. We never have. During the time uh, that the Constitution was written, the only people that were able to vote were white, wealthy landowners, males. That doesn't sound very democratic, does it? So we, we were headed more toward a dem democratic society with the passing of the Voting Rights Act and so forth. And then uh, we started experiencing something different. Well, not entirely different, but it was more subtle more subversive, which is more of the moneyed classes, again, controlling our democratic institutions, our government itself, through donations, Citizens United, and uh, the forming of super PACs, and who's most likely to win an election now? Well, it's whoever gets the most money from the people with the most money. If lay, I think it was Duke University that did a study showing that 100%, 80 to 100% of Americans can back certain legislation and it has 0% of passing. But if there are influences, corporations, and the wealthy that back certain legislation, then it's most likely to pass. So you got money backing who gets into office, and then you got lobbyists from people with money that determine what laws get passed and who it benefits. So if the money classes back certain legislation, the chances are like 70% or above that legislation will pass. But if 80% of Americans, like right now, support universal health care, what are the chances of it passing if it's going to be at the expense of the people with money, the corporations, and so forth? The chances are 0%. According to that study, zero percent. It has no bearing. And true socialism, the means of production, that means that the workers 
have a voice in the workplace. I mean, ideally, that they own the workplace and that they share in the profits of the business, the industry, etc. Before a factory shuts down, the workers are going to be asked. It's not going to be that the corporation decides, well, we don't want to keep this particular place open. It costs too much, so we're going to ship the jobs over to China or Japan or Taiwan or Thailand or wherever. If you ask the workers if they want to eliminate their own jobs so that the corporation can make more money, what do you think they're going to say? You're destroying the entire community this way. So yeah, uh, that is a short history of democracy, of uh, socialism. If you want more details in it, you can always just do a web search on the history of socialism. Actually, surprisingly, Wikipedia has some fairly good information in brief, but you can look further into it than that. Look for the, social, the history of socialism prior to the 20th century or prior to the 19th century, and you'll be surprised what you'll learn. Because it's not... Don't listen to these extremists that tell you, oh, well, that's not real socialism. Because, like I said, there are many different forms of socialism. But we're seeing less and less of it in this country, just as we're seeing less and less democracy. There is nothing more democratic than socialism. So, we can move that direction. We can. We should. Either that or we're all just going to be servants. All right. So, share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can, please donate whatever you can to help expand this channel and my presidential campaign. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.